Hi everyone, welcome back to another amazing episode of the podcast today and today I am talking about Conor McGregor and the real reason he broke his leg in terms of universally, spiritually and how it's going to serve him for the path that he's actually going down. It's quite in depth conversation that we get into. Before we start, I'd just like to let you know that Eternum Labs have four high performance products. One being Lion's Mane Mushroom, which is used to enhance cognition. It supercharges your immune system and your gut health, but it's like actually clarified. It has all of these polysaccharides and things in it, which help your brain perform so much better. And the Lion's Mane Mushroom out of Eternum Labs is like 15% content with all the good stuff when a lot of other lion's mane extracts are roughly around five percent so it's like really high quality the other supplements that we've got is zen which is is an advanced sleep formula we have zone which is all the juice to your brain which helps you just crush stuff and and get everything done without having any stimulants such as caffeine in it then the other one is nmn nmn helps supercharge your nad and nad converts energies within your cell, which essentially makes you perform longer, perform better, and prevents you from aging. Now, before we start, I just want to share a quick quote with you, which has significant relevance to this post. And if you haven't seen my Instagram, I talk about this specifically and go in detail on this quote, but I just want to share share it with you really quickly before we start. He who is only an athlete is too crude, too vulgar, and too much a savage. He who is a scholar is only too soft, too effeminate. The ideal citizen is the scholar-athlete, the man of thought, and the man of action. Thank you, Plato. That is just a good message for us to get balanced. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. Make sure you listen to the end. Please hit the like or subscribe button if you're watching. You have no idea how much that helps me out. And yes, enjoy this podcast, and we'll see you in the next one, guys. All right. So why did Conor McGregor really break his leg? The spiritual reason. So I'm going to get into this podcast and just analyze the whole situation, everything that's happened, Conor's transition, just letting you know, guys, I've been the biggest Conor McGregor fan ever. And just seeing him at the moment with the decisions that he's making and the choices that he's doing, I'm like, no, no, because I'm such a McGregor fan. But he's changed, man. McGregor is a different man. So Before I start this podcast and really get into this like fascinating stuff, because I've been researching on the universe, law of attraction, how our lives work out, our coach entrepreneurs and all the rest of it, and understand the inner workings of our psyche and sort of how manifestation works and how it's just so real. They've literally proved, I must say, I've read in the book, Think and Grow Rich, and they had claimed that there's studies in there that they've proved that positive manifestation is has more science to back behind it than what gravity does. It's legit. It's what happens. You set out intentions and things come real. Um, So essentially, before I start the podcast, I just want to say that Eternum Labs, if you haven't seen the two products, Zen and Zone yet, I highly recommend trialing some. Zen will give you the best sleep ever. Zone will help you focus and basically get in the zone. Zone is brain function, enhanced cognition, and energy and focus. And Zen basically helps you get really good REM, deep sleep, and also helps you wake up really well. It's got chlorogenic acid in there, which helps you wake up really well. But it has um, L-theanine, which helps you get to sleep in more REM sleep. It has valerian root extract, chamomile powder, um, lemon balm, and passion flower, um, which which are nootropics, which help you get into deep sleep, as well as a whole different range of magnesiums. And the zone has, oh man, it's just got so much good stuff in there. Alpha GPC, ashwagandha, taurine, artichoke extract, bacopa extract, ginkgo, PPQ, N-acetyltyrosine, hypozine A, and vitamin B6, the good kind of vitamin B6 too, like the methyl, um, the methyl version of that. So which is like all the abundance you need for your brain to get into the zone. So I literally just had three before this podcast. We're on here. All right, so Mr. McGregor, um, (laughs) I don't even know where to start with this podcast. I'll start at the journey, right? So I've been a fan of Conor McGregor for ages, and what I have seen is his relentless determination to be successful. But if I think about why Conor McGregor broke his leg, and I think about it spiritually, it was supposed to happen for him. It is 
the reason his leg has broken is to serve him as best as possible. Is Conor McGregor's career supposed to be heading down the fighting path, or is it supposed to be something else? All I know is that when Conor McGregor was the double champ and he won and he whacked both belts over his shoulders, it was amazing. Like the whole world just sort of erupted like, oh my gosh. And why that was so important and impactful to people is that people really recognize and respect when people are integral to their word. It's like God power. I've been reading a lot of myth recently and what makes like Zeus, Apollo, the gods on Olympus, Hera, Aphrodite, all of the different gods, the Greek gods that are out there so powerful um, is that they have to stick to their word. I mean, why a genie is so powerful? They grant wishes and they can't go back on the wishes. The gods do the same thing. But what happens is because they're so integral to their word is they, it's sort of a blessing and a curse at the same time. So what happens to the gods is a lot of the time, uh, let's say a mortal will be like, can you please grant me a wish? And if the gods, let's say for example, there's a story told with Zeus and he fell in love with uh, some mortal woman and she was like, she got convinced by her sisters to get him to grant her a wish to see him in his true entirety because she was trying to explain to her sisters that she was in love with Zeus and they're like, yeah, right, make him prove it. And essentially he was like, yes, I'll grant you any wish. And she said, I want to see you in your complete form. And he was like, anything but that, please take back the wish. Please take it back. I don't want to show you the wish. Like this would be the worst thing ever for you and me. She said, no, you promise. You made a promise. You have to. And he goes, oh gosh. And he has to do it. He has to stick to his word, whatever he grants a wish for. He has to do it. So he does. And he, he evolves himself and he turns into his true form. And essentially her eyes melt out of her head and her ears explode and then her whole body disintegrates and Zeus is re very upset about it for a very short period of time because <laughs> he was out there being a stud with all the girls and yeah so he was he regret that now the thing is is we're obviously not gods we're mortals and this is just obviously mythologically speaking but what we really respect is in other humans is when they claim something or say they're going to do something and then they stick to it that is their own God power. And a lot of time for people to stick to their word, if they're saying it to people, like if you say, oh, mum, I'm going to do this or to a partner and you can, or, or even just to yourself, it's very easy to convince yourself to get out of it, right? It's very easy to convince yourself to not have to stick to your word. I said this, I said that. I don't have to do it. I don't have to do it, whatever. But if you make a claim to a community of people, someone you respect or someone who's going to keep you accountable, you sort of have to back up and you have to stick to your word as best as possible. And that's what Conor McGregor did. He claimed all these things with these fights and said he was going to knock people out, said he was going to do this. I remember him saying he was going to have shares in the company and win two title belts. And he went out there and he did it. And that is why people would just lost their minds um, over Conor McGregor and his journey. And it was so fantastic to watch. He'd keep saying something and then he'd go out there and get it. Now, what I'd like to notice is that like... Um, also mythologically speaking or archetypically speaking is that Conor McGregor played the most beautiful role of the trickster and of the magician. Essentially, by claiming what he was going to do, he'd set, set the plan out and then he'd go out and do it. That's the role of the magician, essentially. It's the planner, it's the initiator, it's what creates whatever was out there. And we get to see that in its absolute abundance and entirety as Conor McGregor created a life for himself that we thought was quite majestic. Now, what also happens is if you've listened to my King Warrior Magician Lover podcast or you haven't yet, I strongly recommend going back one or two episodes and listening to the King Warrior Magician Lover podcast because that's going to explain this completely. However, what happens is the role of the magician is to support Port the King. You know, you've got Merlin and King Arthur. You have like Dumbledore and Harry Potter and Dumbledore supports Harry as he grows up into his kingship. Like he goes through the journey of being a knight into being a king. That's basically how we're using for archetypically speaking. However, what the king does is essentially the king is either like balanced or he's too, too much of a tyrant. He's too demanding or he is and he's too negative with what he says or He's too weak and no one can step over him. Obviously, for Connor, what he was playing out was the tyrant. And he was playing way too much of a sort of tyrant archetype. Not to say he is a tyrant. I'm saying he was playing that archetype out as he started to get more success. Because he was experiencing 
frustration. I don't think he got the shares in the UFC company from what I know, right? And basically what happened was Connor's magician was in work. It served the king and then it was time to be a king. He had to enjoy, he got to fight. He was the top dog. He was the best of the business. He got the two title belts. He said what he was going to do, which is like, or of the magician, or of the king. He's gone out there and he's claimed his, his stuff, and now we get to see him in his kingship, making good decisions, being in the business, um, and you know, essentially expanding his empire, which he did, and f fought Floyd Mayweather and um, Khabib and all those other people. And however, he did lose, and I think that was because one of the symptoms of when you're too much of a king and being a tyrant is that you self-sacrifice yourself or you push things like too far and I think that's what happened with Conor McGregor in his own mind as he come a little bit too like we love the egotistical stuff and we love how he was claiming things and and, and doing all these different things but we remember Conor's main archetype wasn't just the magician it was the trickster okay and just to explain this out how this works is what is the role of the trickster because you know Conor's quite tricky it's sort of the Joker and Batman yeah, um, and what, basically what happens is if you put, like, archetypically speaking, if you had the Joker and the Batman, Batman sides of yourself, I mean, that's why we all love that movie so much is we all recognize ourselves as wanting to be a hero, someone who wants to fight and champion for good, but then we also recognize that part of ourselves, like the Joker, who wants to come in and bring us back down. And that has got a really good role. The trickster basically is ego humbling and it will play out throughout our lives in many different scenarios and this happened perfectly with Connor because there's a, there was an old uh, I explained this in my King Warrior Magician Lover podcast and there was an old cartoon of Batman flying around in his um in his Batmobile but like it was the a jet version of it and it was like this hover helicopter craft with all these different guns and it looked fantastic this nightwing thing that's just hovering over the city of Gotham and he's in there being very grandiose. And what does grandiose mean? That is sort of like, look at me and my fancy this. Like, I'm too fancy for you. Like, I'm a little bit higher than everyone else. And essentially, when they get too high, it's the trickster's role to shoot them down. And it plays out perfectly because Batman was doing this over the city. And then the Joker was laughing while Batman was shooting him. And Batman was shooting all these bullets around him and trying to get him and bomb him and throw things at him and everything was missing. And the Joker put his hand on his head and he was cracking up laughing. He put out an old rusty gun, spun the cartridge around, put one bullet in there, clicked it back, shot, shot the bullet up at Batman in his Nightwing and hit the one part of the Nightwing which could destroy it. And then boom, down comes Batman. And now he's facing off with the Joker on equal terms. They go down to fisticuffs. That happens exactly the same as in The Dark Knight in the Joker movie when basically Batman's Batmobile gets broken down into a bike and then the, he's charging at the Joker on the bike and slips off. The Joker brings down, well the role of the trickster is to bring down the king to a normal level where they can egotistically speaking, have some balance. Now that is exactly what has happened with Conor McGregor, right? Because he's been too grandiose, he's been on the top, he's claimed these big calls like f fighting Floyd May Mayweather, not in his own empire. Conor McGregor's empire and specialty was in the MMA ring and obviously if he wanted to develop himself, he would have to go outside or test himself some way and he did that in a boxing ring which is uh, a lot higher chance of him losing and then obviously he did. Same thing with Khabib. I believe that Connor got too grandiose with his decisions and his insults around Khabib and made an absolute riot. I mean, I do get the publicity and I love I love the um, thrill of everything they're doing. And I was like, oh, yes. And I was still hoping, like, I remember watching it like, come on, Connor, win, please. But it just got to the point where it was so personal for Khabib that there was obviously going to be, in my personal opinion, no way that he was going to lose. And it made sense. I was like, well, it makes sense is why... Um, Connor lost that fight. He was too, and he was he wasn't so focused on the fight and winning and achieving, as he was focused on being a tyrant king. Most of his energy was like, how can I build this up? How can I do this? Because I trust myself so much that even though I'm hyping all these things up, I will be able to get there in the ring. And unfortunately, he wasn't as focused on his strategies, and it seems like his attention was somewhere else, so it didn't work. From then, obviously, he's had a couple of fights, whatever he was doing. But when it come down to the Poirier fight, which is, here's the meat and chunks of what we wanted to talk about. When it comes to the Poirier fight, what I believed 
happened was the second one. Obviously, we saw that Conor McGregor got coached by Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins was standing in the ring with him when he was walking on for the second for the, for the second fight with Poirier. And I was like, oh my goodness. Well, obviously, Conor McGregor is going to be unstoppable if he has Tony Robbins, right? However, Tony Robbins is the best Trojan horse that there is. And he would have given Conor the coaching, not that he needed for the fight, but the coaching that he needed in order to evolve and transform himself into the next evolution of his life, which may or may not be fighting. Why does that make sense? Well, Connor had all of these intrinsic motivations in order to win the double, the double belt and the two double, um, and win the double championship, right? And the grind that got him there is not the same motivation that's going to keep him on top, and it's not the same motivation that's going to help him to come back and kill it, because even though he's put himself in a similar position, because he's already got it beforehand, and. As we all know, Tony Tony really helps people discover themselves. He helps people focus on the transpersonal and become a lot more self-reflective and literally be better versions of themselves and make better decisions. Hence why we saw Conor McGregor being so polite, well-mannered, and, and more of a respectable man in his fight with Poirier. However, that is a brand new motivation. He's not used to that. Would that motivation be extremely good for Conor McGregor in his fighting career? Yes, it would be. However, he isn't used to that motivation. If he were, I believe that if Connor were to stick to that motivation and that type of influence that he had from Tony and cultivated it over a few fights, he may have won some more. However, the universe will always serve you what you most need, and I see it happen again and again and again and again. There's a reason why things happen or is uh, why things happen give you a reason, right, for something. And obviously that has happened with Connor, <laughs> with him with the whole breaking his leg episode. So basically what I believe is what happened is that during the time that Connor has been coaching with, with Tony and had that motivation is his regrets because he thought that didn't work. That didn't work. I lost the fight with Poria and we're coming into round two. And he sort of, I think got caught up in his own mind and his own, own ego and become really unconscious about what he was doing. I think that his goals have switched around and and I, he's a little bit confused with exactly where to target them because once you've had coaching from Tony Robbins and you've made conscious all of those different things that you think have been really good and you've got a different belief mindset and you start to be in real positive, that is going to infect you. Like straight up, you're, you're a different person now and you need to do that. And I think Connor is in such a good position to influence people around the world, influence children, bring up the MMA community, help the UFC sport to be even bigger and better than what it is and, and show people how to be a really good man and stick to their word and be integral and show that they, their God power is there. However, because his motivations are all confused at the moment, obviously what has happened is he's gone, well, that's not going to work, this, this new person of myself for coming up with the fights. I've got my third fight with Poirier. How am I going to win? I'm going to go back to the old me. However, what happens is when you're progressing and you're becoming more conscious and you're getting into a better version of yourself, is that that's not going to work anymore. <laughs> what You can't unlearn a lot of like some things that you have learned. And Connor has learned to be a new person. So I think he's been consciously trying really hard to be his old old self when obviously that has not in the case, <laughs> right? From what I've seen personally, from his interviews and what he's stating and the insults that he's been slaying, is it doesn't seem authentic. And doing a lot of self-reflection exercises myself was in coaching a lot of entrepreneurs and calling people out on a lot of their bullshit a lot of the time and understanding that you sort of get this feeling of when you can tell people are being authentic or not. And Connor was trying as hard as as hard as he could from my perspective for trying to give every reason possible as to why his old self was still there and it just didn't seem super authentic to me and I was like oh no I don't know if this is legit because he's taken all these other inf insults are getting like back at him and people are making sense and it seems like he was getting 
down about it. Just just myself personally, even in the like the press conferences beforehand when I was watching them, I was like, oh no, this doesn't seem like really legit. I wonder how he's going to go here. And then obviously, because he keeps going down, like essentially what I believe is we sort of have a path, right? That's supposed to happen for our lives. You've got point A and point B, and there's sort of like a straight line between it. And as much as we, let's say, veer off the path and we start going, you know, east or west, is that something's going to happen within our lives to basically bump us back onto the path. And what happens is when we are on our path and we are doing everything that we need to do to live our better lives, is we feel a lot more fulfilled. However, point B isn't always clear. So that's why we get distracted and we move off. I'm not sure what Connor's point B is, and I'm not sure what his point B is too, but we do know that halfway on the way to whatever he was supposed to be doing with his life was winning the championship. However, what he's done now recently is he's gone off the track, and the universe will always do something to push you back in, or it'll serve you something and reward you if you're staying on track. And essentially, Connor's been off track, and he hasn't been off track with what he's doing per se, getting in the ring fighting. He's getting off track with who he is, like internally, what his values, what his belief systems are, what he's doing, like the influence that he has. Like, unfortunately for Connor, when you get into a position where you influence a shitload of people, that's a lot of energy to hold. And, you know, the old saying, with great power becomes great res- comes great responsibility. Old Spider-Man, Spider-Man, thank you so much. And it does. Every little conscious choice and decision that Connor makes is going to have a ripple effect to basically the whole world. And... In the position that he's in, which is a very king position, that just comes with it. When you get to get to be in that king position, all your choices and decisions are going to be absolutely criticized in the public eye and you're going to hear about them straight away and they're going to humble you. And essentially because Connor's gone off and been too much of a trickster and played too much of the villain role, which he has played perfectly, is he's just been served by the universe. And what happened is because he's been off the path, the universe went, you need to get back on with who you're being. And what we're going to do right now is get you to break your leg on live television. And when Connor was talking like smack and talking shit afterwards to Poirier when he was, when he basically was um, laying down, I sort of, I lost a little bit of respect. Not, not a lot, just a little bit. Cause I understand where he's coming from. And obviously it's hard when that's immediately happened because you haven't had time to reflect anything.